exactly. God has called us to be people of destiny. If you want, you can write it down somewhere so that you won't forget. Amen. Hallelujah. God is calling us to be people of destiny because God has plans for your life. God has a calling for your life and God wants to fulfill it through your life. Amen. And each one of us who is sitting here, we all have an important role to play in this world. It might be in the church, it might be outside the church, but you have a role. And that role cannot be denied by anyone. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's the reason why you are here. That's the reason why we all are here today. Because God has a plan. God has not called us to be people who would come to this world, who are born into this world, live like any other person, and then one day you exit from here. Because that's what we get to see around the world, isn't it? At every time we look at people, we see that they're coming, they're going back. And, uh, and if you have to take account or you have, if you have to create an account for their life, you would see that they have not done anything much in this world. And... And this is the case with Christians also, believers who love God, who walk with God. But somewhere in their life, they have not intentionally pursued the call of God on their life. Uh, they sometimes have this wrong idea that call of God is only for specific people, for pastors, for evangelists, for other people who have been called by God all right? and we live in that wrong belief and then one day we will also exit like anybody else in this world and when we look at our own life after living for a long time and then we when we go through it every day um, trying to understand, okay, what, what was I here for? And if we don't have a definite answer, our, our life becomes meaningless, all right? Our life does not have any kind of meaning if there is no purpose in life, if there is, if there is no destiny in our life. We are called to live a life of destiny. Amen. We are called to live according to the expectations of God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We are not called to live like any other person. At least in this church, we have to believe that. I don't know about others, but in this church, I believe everyone has a destiny. Everybody who is sitting here, you have a call on your life. And you have to understand what is your calling in life. It's not just being a pastor. It's not just being an evangelist. But the Lord is calling all of us together to work together to build his kingdom. And the moment we get into that understanding and we make it ours, Right? We can see it, see all these things as, as a spectator, somebody who is sitting in the audience and watching the show unravel before you. We can be like that or you can be part of that play. It's all our choice. And God wants you to be the part of the play and not be part of the audience. Amen. Hallelujah. And we have to deliberately, intentionally pursue the call of God. And when does it become or when does it start? It starts at the time when you know the Lord. Hallelujah. Which means if you had known the Lord when you were 10, you have to begin 
asking this question, Lord, what is your plan over my life? It doesn't matter if you are 50 when you came to know the Lord. Even then, the Lord is asking you and me to ask him what is God's plan for the life that he has given to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we need to understand life as life that goes beyond this earth. Only then we will have that kind of perspective. There is going to be a day when you are going to stand before the king. Today we sing the song, Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Eh? Jesus is my friend. And we have all these kinds of song. But one day, when you exit this world, once you complete the time that is allotted to you in this world, you are going to stand before the king and the judge who is going to ask for an account. And at that time, we can stand confident before him or we will be ashamed. Again, the choice is ours. The Lord does not push you into what he wants to do. He will not push you. The scripture very clearly says that behold I come and knock at your door. If you want you can open the door. Just like that God will come to you and he will tell you. He will remind you that I have got a purpose for you. Do you want to fulfill it or not? The moment you decide to fulfill it you see a change in the way that you live in this world. Hallelujah. 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 See, when God told Jacob, sorry, Joseph, that he is going to be lifted up before his brothers, before his father, and everybody would be bowing down before him, everyone despised him. Everyone said that, hey, there is the big dreamer. There is this guy who thinks a lot about himself. He gives undue importance to himself. They, that's what, that was what they were thinking about Joseph. But Joseph had a dream that one day he would be lifted up. Hallelujah. And then what happens is that his brothers, they get jealous of him and they make they make plans to destroy his life and they're thinking in their mind that if we destroy him we can destroy his destiny listen to joseph he says that it is not you who sent me but it is god Whatever situation that you are in your life today, it is the Lord who is taking you through, this, through those situations. It, is, it might be painful. It might be uncomfortable for you to go through that season. But hang in there. The Lord has put you in there. And one day the Lord will reveal his glory through your life. Hallelujah. You are a man of destiny. You are a woman of destiny because God wants to rescue his people. It's not just for you. It's not just for, it was not just for Joseph to become the second person in the kingdom of Egypt and to experience all the goodness of Egypt, to experience all the luxuries and the pleasures of Egypt. It was not for himself that God put him in that place, but it was for his brothers that one day God knew that there is going to be a famine in the world. And that day I need to have somebody in a land where they can cultivate something, store it in a place of power, in a place of influence. So what did God do? He allowed Joseph to go through those life situations so that he could lift him up. Hallelujah. So when you're going through your pain, when you're going through your suffering, don't give up on the destiny that God has for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. The moment you look inward into your life, into yourself, you begin to lose courage. Hallelujah. But you need to look outward. You need to look outward. We are living in a world where the world teaches us. The world tells us that you have to look inward because there are problems. Yes, there are problems in your heart. There are problems in our, in our life. There are things that we need to correct in our life. Yes, those things are important. You need to work on it. But at the same time, too much of looking inward will put you in a place of depression. Hallelujah. Because you have not anchored yourself in God. You have not anchored yourself in a place where you will derive or get some encouragement from. Imagine a person who has been failing in his life. What happens? What would happen to him if he's always looking inward? He is meditating on his failures. The more he is going to meditate on his failures, what would happen to him? Will he succeed in his life or will he become more of a failure? What do you think? More of a failure because he's just focusing on his failure. He's not taking any step in his life to correct those failures in his life. Because his failure has taught him that there is no destiny for him. There is no point in changing his life. That's what he thinks in his mind. So he stands over there. He, he stagnates in that place. And for the devil, it's an easy thing. Hallelujah. I've understood there are two ways in which the devil works. One, it is through guilt. And the other is through gluttony. And these are the two things that the devil used with the Lord. You put guilt in people's life and they stagnate. They don't move. If you're feeling guilty about something, you're feeling remorseful and you're filled with regret in your life, will you ever move out from that place? No. See, let me tell you, in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve committed that disobedience. They sinned against God. Immediately they know that they are unclothed. They don't have any dress. And then the Lord comes down and tells them, this is what happens next. If they were to, if the Lord had not intervened in that situation, what would have happened? They, have, they would have lived in that shame forever, thinking that there is no coming out of this shame. Hallelujah. 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 So the Lord intervenes in your life. When you're going through a situation in your life where you have been thinking about yourself as a failure, you have been thinking about yourself as somebody who cannot make any kind of progress in life. The more you meditate on it, the more you will feel guilty of what you have done. And that feeling of guilt is keeping you in the same place where you were before years back. You have not moved from there. That's what the enemy does. And sometimes if that guilt does not work, what does he do? He put you into a place where you will be gluttonous. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about people in general. You see people, they are either stuck in guilt or they're stuck in gluttony. What does gluttony? Gluttony is when you want to have more, isn't it? You're not satisfied with what you have got, you want more. If it is food, you want more. If it is money, you want more. 
If it is gadget, you want more. If it is fame, you want more. If it is popularity, you want more. You're not satisfied. So the enemy knows that he can easily trick you into either one of these things. He can either put you into shame or he can put you into a place of gluttony where you're buying stuff, where you're gathering stuff, accumulating stuff, thinking that this is going to satisfy you, but you know that it's not going to satisfy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know the truth that it is not going to satisfy us in any way, but we still keep doing it like a machine. Because somewhere the enemy has put that thought in our mind that the more you accumulate, the better your life would be. The more you are being in a place of self-pity, oh, nobody cares for me, everybody is rejecting me, nobody loves me. Huh? All these places are places of guilt, isn't it? I think they don't love me because I did this to them. I think God is not loving me because I'm, 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 I'm always failing him. Guilt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you need to come out of these two things. When you know that you have found yourself in a place of guilt or in a place of gluttony, you need to know that someone is constantly whispering into your ears. Now, what is he doing? He knows that if you step into your destiny, he will, you will destroy his work. Hallelujah. So he will do everything possible to stop you from functioning in your life. He would put dysfunctions in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you need the light of the Lord to shine upon your darkest situations on your life so that you can walk in freedom. Hallelujah. And what is that light of the Lord? The light of the Lord is your scripture, is the Bible that you hold in your hand. The Lord shows light. Hallelujah. The scripture says like this, those who looked at him were enlightened. Hallelujah. So you need to shift your focus away from guilt, from shame, from gluttony into the eternal light of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You would do this only when you know that you have a destiny. You know that your life matters. You know that your life has some value. Hallelujah. 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 You need to know that my life has got some value. Look at yourself and say that God values this life. God values this life. Hallelujah. So many, so many times people commit suicide. And every time I see those news in newspapers and, and in news channels, I worry. I ask the Lord, Lord, why, why are people doing this? Why do they do the thing that they're doing? When, even when they know that they're going to harm themselves, why are they so clear about what they want to do? Because somewhere they have lost the hope. They have lost the value over their own life. See, when you see guys sprinting, or accelerating their bikes to glory. You might be thinking that it's because they're rebelling against the system. No. The underlying fact is this. They don't think their life is worth something. That is why you see them raising on the street. Because they, they're thinking, even if I die, nobody is going to get affected. I know some people are there who wants to do for attention, but somewhere in their deepest heart, they have come to this conclusion that nobody even cares. So let me do some stunt so that they will think, they will know that I'm alive in this world. They are seeking attention. 
Why are they seeking attention? Because they want to be valued. Hallelujah. 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 See, the moment the enemy takes the God-given value in your life, you will come to a place where you think there is no meaning for this life. There is no destiny. Hallelujah. What is destiny? Destiny is your potential. The place where God wants you to be. What you would be known for. That is your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Value. Begin to value yourself. When you don't value yourself, you will not value others also. You will put, you will put others in danger. Hallelujah, especially on the roads, even in life. Hallelujah. Value. You have a God-given value. Look at yourself and say, I'm a person of value. I'm a person of value. I'm a person of value. The moment you understand that truth, you will begin to change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Because when you know that there is value, you will ask this question, where do I get this value from? Where do I get this value from? The value comes from the Lord. Because the scripture says like this, that I have created you, I have knit you, I've woven you in your mother's womb. The Lord is the one who is creating you. The Lord is the one who has fashioned you, designed you. Hallelujah. It is nobody else. Hallelujah. You are a person of worth. People might look at your color. People might look at your face. You People might look at your structure and say that you are no person of value. But when the king of glory comes to you, he says, looking at your eyes and says like this, that you are a person of value. That's the reason why Jesus, 2,000 years back, he died on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, so that you can be a person of value. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that you can know that you can be rescued from the clutches of death and your life will be secured with God. Hallelujah. You are a person of destiny. Hallelujah. You are a person of destiny. <clears throat> Begin to value your life. Begin to value the time that God has given to you. The time that you have is limited. I can tell you that. Hallelujah. You have heard me a couple of times or, or maybe a number of times saying this. Do you know the distance between my school gate and the place where I'm standing now? The time gap is very less. I still remember the day when I walked out of my school. Walked out of my college, walked out, out of many other things, and it has been at, like this. You will soon come to a place where you will realize this. At that time, when you're looking back, do you know people who are in their 40s, they have this burnout. In their 40s, in their 50s, they look back at their life and they are asking this question, why am I even alive? Why am I here for? What is the meaning of my existence? Many in their 40s. In their 20s and 30s. You look at the world. The world celebrates till you are 35. Once you cross 40, you, have, you are categorized as the oldie. You are the old generation. You are not the vibing kind. They're called as the Ammavan. Ammavan is an old person. Right? And then you begin to rethink about what you have been doing in your life. Till 40 is the world keeps you entertained and engaged in so many things. They keep selling you stuff. They keep selling you gadgets. They keep selling you cars. 
See, I've seen this with the youngsters. When you are young, you want the most flashy cars. But when you get old, what kind of car do you want? Comfort, which is practical. Isn't it? Your life changes. Hallelujah. So the world celebrates young life. The world celebrates youth. The moment you cross 40, you begin to question your existence. What am I here for? At that time, you need to have an answer. Hallelujah. 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 Because time is quick. With the snap of a finger, it goes by. So be very careful. If you are a man of destiny, you will maximize your time. When you know that God has a call upon my life, God wants me to do certain things in this world. God wants me to fulfill certain things in this world. You do everything possible to fulfill that. Hallelujah. 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 What are the enemies of your destiny? One is impulsiveness. Second is pride. Pride. There's a famous king in Israel. His name is Uzziah. Let's read that. I think that will make more sense. So, Second Chronicles, chapter twenty-six. Second Chronicles and chapter twenty-six, verses fifteen to twenty-one. Let me read it for you. In Jerusalem, it's talking about this King Uzziah. In Jerusalem, he made engines of war invented by skillful people. So who is this guy? He's an entrepreneur. He's an inventor. He is putting people in place to invent stuff. Right? Second Chronicles chapter 26, verses 15 onwards. In Jerusalem, he made engines of war invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the corners for the purpose of shooting great stones and arrows. Machine gun, probably, or something, catapult. Hence his fame spread afar for he was marvelously helped until he was strong but when he became strong now pause for a moment there but when he became strong let's read it together read it out loud but when he became strong his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly. And he was unfaithful to the Lord his God, for he entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Then Azariah, the priest, entered after him, and with him 80 priests of the Lord, valiant men, they opposed Uzziah, the king, and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful and will have no honor from the Lord God. But Uzziah, with a censer in his hand for burning incense, was enraged. While he was enraged with the priests, the leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord beside the altar of incense. Azariah, the priest, chief priest, and the priest looked at him. Behold, he was leprous on his forehead, and they hurried him out of there. He himself also hastened to get out because the Lord God had smitten him. King Uzziah was a leper to the day of his death and he lived in a separate house being a leper for he was cut off from the house of the Lord and Jotham his son was over the king's house judging the people of the land what a tragic end 
to a person who was destined to become the greatest king in the history of Israel. One thing, pride, pride. What caused that pride? He began to think that I'm a strong person. I don't need anybody. I don't need anyone in my life. He began to think like that. And he destroyed his life. What caused after that? What happened after his pride? His heart was so proud that he acted corruptly. Pride corrupts your heart. That leads you to become unfaithful to God. Pride. Pride is your enemy. Whenever the Lord leads you to your destiny and the Lord is lifting you up. In your school, you might be getting good marks. I've seen this when kids, when they get, get good marks, they think that they're very intelligent. And by their 12th, by their college, they forget about God. They think that all they have achieved in their life is through their hard work. Yes, there is a part. But you need favor of God. I had this friend of mine. And one day we were talking to him. We were talking to each other. And he was telling me, you know, I've worked hard. I've worked hard through my life. The reason why I'm here is because I have been a working, hard working person. I said, I know you're a hard working person. I know the hours that you have dedicated yourself to study well. But I also believe that it was a favor of God. And that's where he disagreed. He said, no. I don't think I have a favor of, I don't think I have God's favor in life. And I don't think that my progress, my achievement, my success, according to the worldly terms, is the favor of God. I said, no, it is the favor of God. You've got a good house. You've got a stable family. You've got a father who's, who's agreed to pay for your fees, who supports you. That's a good house. That's a stable ground for you to grow. He was not convinced. And I did not try to convince any, him anymore. Because sometimes when you gather up a lot of knowledge, when you gather up a lot of information that can make you pride, proud, and you begin to think that I've achieved the world and you don't need God. And that is the case with many people that I've seen in life. Once they become, they accumulate degrees after degree. They think that there is no need for God in my, in my life. Pride corrupts. Let's say it together. Pride corrupts. And it leads you, leads a person to become unfaithful towards God. Hallelujah. So protect your heart. Protect your heart. You are a man of destiny. You are a woman of destiny, but you need to protect your heart. Uzziah, if he had not given into a heart of pride, if he had not given himself importance that was not required from him, that undue importance that we give to ourselves, if it was not given, he would have been known as the greatest king in Israel. But he was turned to a leper because he failed to acknowledge God. In your life, there would be situations in your life where you think that you have accumulated. You don't need anyone. Pride. Enemies to your destiny. Impulsiveness. Pride. Unforgiveness. Be quick to forgive. Laziness. The entire Proverbs is dedicated to wisdom and laziness. Don't be a lazy person. When you know that God is calling you to something, be a person who, would, who is completely committed 
to fulfill the call of God in your life. Fifthly, disobedience to God. Disobedience to God. Those are the enemies of your destiny. Hallelujah. How do you become a man of destiny? How do you become a man of destiny? The first thing is be available and position yourself. Be available and position yourself. Hallelujah. You know the story of Ruth. Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, after her two sons are dead, she decides that I'm going to go back to my hometown. She's going towards hometown and she tells her two daughter-in-laws, Ruth and Orpha, he tells, he, she tells him, hey, you go back to your own house. You go back to your own land because you will have something there. I am not in a position to provide you any more sons. I am an old person. You don't have anything in me. You don't have any dreams coming through me. You don't have any destiny coming through me. That's what Naomi said. But Ruth says, no, I'm not going to go back to my own people. I am going to be with you. You are my relative. You are my person. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. She decides that and she positions herself to a great destiny where Jesus comes through her. Hallelujah. 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 You need to know that you are a person of, of destiny, but you will also have to position yourself to become a person of destiny. I still remember this incident that happened. Uh, I, some of you would know what I'm going to share. Um, one day, the Lord gave me something to bless someone. So he showed me a specific person that this is the person that you have to bless. And you have to wait for this person to come to you. Those are the things that the Lord told me. I said, okay, Lord, I'll wait for this person. So I kept that blessing for that person, dedicated. So I wait for this person. I call this person up. Can you please come over? Doesn't turn up. Two, three weeks passed by. I asked the Lord, Lord, what should I do? Because I didn't want to hold it forever. Right? I asked the Lord. The Lord tells me, wait for two more weeks. I said, okay, I'll wait. I keep the thing. I wait. Call this person, no response. And I said, and then I hear the Lord saying, give it to someone else. And he shows me a specific person and I bless that person. So you have to position you have to position. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to position yourself to reach the God-given destiny in your life. Hallelujah. Secondly, do not focus. How do you become a man of destiny? How do you become a woman of destiny? Do not focus on your abilities or inabilities. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 12 and verse 9. Apostle Paul says like this, that his grace was sufficient. See, God's grace is sufficient for your life. Hallelujah. God's grace is sufficient. He was saying that there is a thing, there's a thorn in my flesh which is causing me frustration. It is costing, causing me inconvenience. But Lord, what should I do? The Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. For all of us, when you're looking at your inabilities, when you're looking at your weaknesses, when you're looking at things that, is, that you think is stopping you from moving to your destiny, know this. God's grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is sufficient for you. Look at yourself and say, God's grace is sufficient for me. Shake up your neighbor and say, God's grace is sufficient for you. 
God's grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. Don't focus on your weaknesses. Don't focus on what you don't have. Hallelujah. If we had to focus on our weaknesses, we would not have been here. Hallelujah. It is the grace of God that works through our life. Hallelujah. Even when we feel weak, even when we feel inadequate, the grace of God works in your life. Hallelujah. Fulfilling God's destiny for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not alone in this life. You are not alone fighting your battle. There is this grace of God, abundant grace of God that is backing you up, that is leading you into your destiny. Hallelujah. So even when you're walking through that valley of hopelessness, even when you're walking through that valley of failure, look at those situations and say that God's grace is sufficient for me. God's grace is sufficient for me. Hallelujah. Can we shout it out? God's grace is sufficient for me. Hallelujah. I'm not going to look at my inadequacies. I'm not going to look at my weaknesses, but I'm going to focus my eyes, my ears, my mind on the grace of God. Hallelujah. 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 Those painful situations in Apostle Paul's life could have rendered him a weak person. But he chose, I'm going to focus on the grace of God because that will give me the strength to move on. Hallelujah. The day that you find yourself where you are not moving ahead in your life, where your relationships are not flourishing, where your finances are not flourishing, look at yourself. And remind yourself, stand before a mirror and look at yourself and say, hey, all you need is grace. Hallelujah. All you need is grace. His grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. Even when people are saying that you are a failure, you look at your mirror, you look at your reflection and say, God's grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. How do you become a man of destiny? Be ready to dream God's dream. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for me? Who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what the Lord is wanting to hear from each one of us today. Hallelujah. The Lord is looking at this world and he has a dream. He has a vision to rescue people from the pits of darkness. Hallelujah. From the shackles of slavery. And he is looking at all of us and he is asking the question, who is there? Who is going to go on behalf of us? If we say that God, I am ready. I am going to go on behalf of you the Lord will lead you to your destiny be ready to dream with God hallelujah hallelujah be ready to dream with God let me tell you the moment you begin to dream with God this place is going to change hallelujah 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 how many of us are bothered by corruption all of us are. How many of us are bothered by injustice? All of us are. How many of us are bothered by immorality in the land? All of us are. How many of us are bothered by the crime around us? All of us are. What is the answer? You are the answer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking, who is going to go on behalf of me? Who is going to be my ambassador? Who is going to represent me in Nagarkoil? Hallelujah. Today as a church, as a family of God, it should be our decision that God, we are here for you. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who is standing with us. It doesn't matter who is going to, who is going to reject us. It doesn't matter who is going to despise us. It doesn't matter who is going to dishonor us but Lord we are going to stand for you in this land fulfill your destiny your call upon this land hallelujah we want to
to see a Nagarkoil changed and transformed for God's glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to give this land to the next generation. Hallelujah. We want to give a land that is blessed. Hallelujah. We don't want to give a land that is cursed to our children. Hallelujah. What we want to give is a land that is blessed. Hallelujah. We want to give a land that is overflowing with milk and honey. Hallelujah. 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 Let's dream with God for Nagar Koil. Hallelujah. Imagine that one day every church will come together. Hallelujah. Everyone will hold their hands together and say, let's unite for God. Hallelujah. Imagine that one day when people will be, will be, will walk without fear in the streets of Nagakul, in the streets of Tamil Nadu, in the streets of India. Hallelujah. Where you don't have to fear for your life. Is there somebody lurking somewhere to kill me? Is there some danger ahead of me? You don't want to have an insecure generation. What we want to raise is a secure generation. And that depends whether we answer the call or not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is your response today? What will you say to God today? Who will go for me? Will you say... Lord, here I am. Or will you say, Lord, my neighbor is good. Hallelujah. The Lord is looking for you and me to rise up. Hallelujah. Be a man of destiny. Don't look at your inabilities. Dream. God's dream. Be available. Hallelujah. 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 Can we all stand in the presence of God? Hallelujah.